Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys we're jumping into the world of Luna Classic. We've seen some recent moves to the upside and we want to know whether or not this is over and there's going to be some room to the downside or whether or not this is going to continue up. As I get into this video if you find it useful and informative hit the like button I do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel then why not consider subscribing and staying up to date with all the videos that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Okay let's get into this. So here we have Luna Classic paired up with BUSD on the hourly chart and Binance is our data source and as you can kind of see we had this really kind of like straight line up here now the market typically doesn't do this this is an unusual move but it wouldn't be unusual for something like Luna Classic considering you know the kind of supply levels that Luna Classic has um, and if we come over into uh, coin market cap here and we actually come over into Luna Classic and we just come into this one here we can see that the circulating supply is 6.1 thousand billion so basically 6.1 trillion coins okay um or tokens this is a significant amount this means that the price doesn't necessarily move in the same way as you would see a normal legitimate crypt cryptocurrency that's not to say that luna classic isn't legitimate it's just it's now become a bit of a meme coin and replaces that of dogecoin or shiba inu these are the kind of really ridiculously high supply cap tokens um, that are really driven from retail investors who are speculating because it's so cheap it might eventually go to x price and as such you find there is a huge amount of um uh, pull towards it right and as such you find yourself with moves like this these unusual kind of parabolic moves now ultimately this was driven more from the 1.2 percent tax on binance um and basically that drove the price up and fomo kind of feeds into this thing quite a bit um but obviously we pulled back a tad and then we moved up okay so let's talk about what this looks like as our one-to-one -one kind of minimum expectations okay so straight off the bat we can say that you know this is the minimum expectation expectation being met doesn't necessarily mean it's over because there is the one to one ratio which goes up there right so one two and three a three wave structure taking us to 47044 now this upper range of course up here is uh, not a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination as i said we've already done the minimum of what you would expect of a c wave just up here we've pulled back a little bit and this is looking interesting and we'll talk about this in a second um but you know this is still technically something that could be in place so let's go ahead and break this down in a little bit more detail okay so i'm going to remove those three waves and what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on something like this instead and where does that go this is talking about trying to find uh, a common ground between our kind of 47044 upper dash line here versus you know some maybe a little bit more conservative targets and then aim somewhere for in between and um, so as we kind of think about the structure here there's a few things that we should think about for Luna Classic right we aren't relying on indicators and things like that to help us understand what's going on in the charts I mean they're useful to a degree but you can't really rely on them 100% instead I rely on price action price action analysis is, is absolutely king I use Elliott wave theory but there's many different types we can also take a look at things like um, support and resistance lines okay these are something that we we refer to quite a bit in uh, the crypto space because they are very very meaningful um things right and here we can see that there's some interesting areas and i'm just putting these dashed lines up here right um, and just so that we can kind of see what's going on and we can kind of see these kind of flashing up a little bit right and um, but basically we think of these as resistance or support but actually they go by another name as well and this is called um, supply zones and demand zones okay supply and demand is everything if you follow the other streams and things that we do on the channel when it comes to supply and demand this is absolutely vital to knowing where you're likely to bounce from and where you're likely to back from to help with this we have a couple of different things we have these order blocks and you can see this order block here is a sell order block this means that this is an area of resistance it so happens that it coincides with this local high top as well you can see that happened over here as well and some of these don't get hit right we can see that people are trying to sell but the price keeps getting away from them okay and um, likewise we've got buy order books these are down here you can see how these have sometimes been hit and sometimes they haven't there's a tiny one here but the main order block is all the way down here at 1.2 uh, or to be more specific 0.00012320 so we know that there's actually some interesting order blocks in the system right we know this is going to be a big one that we're going to be gravitating down towards this is a sell order block but it's not massive by any stretch of the imagination this is a big order block 
this one is going to be good liquidity that the price should rally from, okay? Um, so knowing these things, we have some interesting kind of things to think about. Let's turn those off and turn on the liquidity. This is your leverage positions, okay? So as we start thinking about where that liquidity sits, there really isn't that much on the upper side, and there's a lot of liquidity down here on the lower side. This means that a lot of people are speculating that the price is going up, and as a result, these are the prices that they're going to get liquidated on. Now, why is that important? That's important because it allows us to understand where the price is naturally going to go and head towards. Okay, so we obviously have things like our support lines and our resistance lines. We have our order blocks. We have our... Um, our liquidity, and we also have Elliott Wave Theory, right? So let's now start pairing these things together and give ourselves some probability over where we think Luna Classic is going to go. Okay, so straight off the bat, we can say, okay, well, here is our big one-to-one. -one. Okay, we have to get past this order block to come up to this dash line. Do we think that is probable? That's going to be a tough order. Can happen, of course. It is a small order block for selling. It isn't a huge one, so we could potentially just chew through it and continue going, okay? We can see that there's a little bit of liquidity right on here as well from liquidations. So again, that's going to be an interesting area and um, that might be attractive to, to, to some whales or some kind of uh, market maker out there trying to kind of, you know, take money away from retail investors. Before the price moves down, which seems to be the area that we will have to gravitate down towards to take advantage of the liquidity in the order block, then we, we might actually move up before going down. This happens because before the price can go down, these guys here have to be taken out of play, okay? Um, so price will go up usually to take these out um, as we don't want, uh, or as the market makers don't want the price to go down and these guys to make profit. So normally the price will come up, could be quick, could be a quick wick, something like that takes out all of these main ones, probably somewhere around here, maybe not quite as high as the one-to-one -one, and then drops down and takes out all of the extra long positions that were being put in place. Okay, and drops probably all the way down to this order block down here. Okay, so now we have a bit of an idea. Okay, we've got some interesting stuff going on. How do we get down here though? Okay, from an Elliott Wave theory point of view, how do we get all the way down here at one, two, one, three, whatever I said it was, one, three, five, something like that. Um, well, in order to do that, we're going to have to start to, to think about these things slightly differently. I'm going to turn the HTF liquidity, but I'm going to leave the order blocks on here. Okay, so let's hypothetically say, yes, we do push up higher first. We've got three waves coming down. We'll have three waves going up. The next three waves will be down, and I think this is going to be the area that we're actually going to gravitate down towards. Okay, now bearing in mind, these order blocks, this is the BB order block indicator. Okay, it isn't going to be perfect 100% of the time, but it is going to show you, and it doesn't repaint, anything that happened in the history here okay so what i mean by repaint is it doesn't just remove all of this old data it leaves it on the chart so you can go back and you can see where these orders used to be you can see ones that haven't been met and ones that have been met we can also throw on the bollinger bands if we want to and we can start to see where these um, order blocks sometimes coincide with bollinger band areas um, so down here for example this is an area that has been interested this one's an interesting one but some of these have absolutely no relation whatsoever to bollinger bands um, and you know you can see that from in the historic data here um, now from the bbs or the bollinger bands uh, we can of course you know take a look at where we are we're getting a contraction so do expect a bit of a move really really soon let's go ahead and um, i'm actually going to leave the order blocks on there for a second okay so let's say we do have a three wave move upwards okay uh, then well if we do that and we go up here and we just maybe finish somewhere around there then actually what we could say is all of that isn't a one single a wave this is a b wave and then we come down here into this c wave it then becomes a big three wave drop with these micro waves coming in do expect there to then be some kind of bouncing in here you wouldn't go straight down here for example and um, so it'd be interesting to kind of see how this one plays out if this is something that happens then that order block down here gets met that is liquidity and that is the next catalyst for a next big move to the upside timing it have absolutely no idea can't time a market um you should know that by now that's a uh, kind of a fool's game um but it gives us an idea let's go ahead and focus in on um you know what's going on right here and right now because this is also an interesting structure okay so what do we see well we see three waves coming down here we have a bounce up and then we have potentially three waves still to come in play so let me show you first the first set of waves one two three 
Okay, we've gone up in three, and you just can't see it because it's a really small move, but basically in here, go one, two, and three like that. Okay, there's three waves there. And then right here, one, bounce up, got to come down. So the next move seems to be down. It would basically complete this structure. Let's go ahead and map out where we think that's likely to go. Okay, let me just go ahead and just grab hold of this, put it on here. Here we can see that our one-to-one -one would put us at about 27428. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a dash line right on there. And it's uh, four, uh, 27428. So I'm a little bit on the higher side there. Let's just go ahead and put that into the correct area, delete the fibs, um, and then just put a price label on this one so that we can keep a close eye on it, uh, like so. Okay, so that would be there. Then I can go ahead and delete that off, delete this, delete this, and grab a three wave structure, and it would actually look something like this by the time it's done. Okay, um, and again, that would not be an overextension. It's pretty just standard move, and then you'd look like that. Okay, now this would align us to I'm still moving up higher because this would be our one, two, three wave structure, and of course, you know that would also be wrapped up inside of this here as also our three wave structure. One, two. Three. Okay, so we kind of get an idea. We have to move up, but before we move up, we probably have to move down, uh, realistically speaking, okay? And of course, all of this, um, let me just put that one back, because I'll leave that there for now, uh, or it could be a part of a bigger play to head down towards that extra liquidity down here uh, in this range. So let's go ahead and just map out what that might look like. Um, put this on here, grab that up there, move this over to a theoretical point here somewhere. So yeah, round here seems to be the most logical place. I'm going to put it slap bang in the middle of the green box down here on the one to one. And that means approximately 41512 would have to be hit in order to keep things uh, aligned to that kind of thinking. So um, I'm going to leave it there. That seems to be the most kind of obvious thing that's going on within the space of Lunar Classic. I um, do expect some volatility. The reason that we go down right now is an overbought stochastic RSI on the four hour. Uh, sorry, the one hour. The four hour is actually really good. It's oversold. And that shows us up eight hour chart looks like it can go up the daily chart needs to come down and uh the weekly well it doesn't really it doesn't really exist so um do look like we have to come down to go up and then once we're up there we come down in a bigger way that's kind of what i think is going to happen here with luna classic but i could be wrong of course make sure you do your own research i'm not a financial advisor i can't give you financial advice all i can do is give you my thoughts and opinions on the data in the charts as i see it if you found this useful and informative hit the like button i do appreciate that if you happen to be new to the channel then why not go ahead and subscribe guys until the next one, have a fantastic day.